Hello, everybody. Um, sorry, I've been um, radio silent the last two days. I have been, um, well, I guess I still did the live, but um, I haven't made any videos because every time I've tried to, I keep going to serious dark places and um, I went through something this weekend that put me in that state of mind and I just, every time I would make a video, I'd get about two minutes in and I would stop it and delete it. And I um, just finally have decided um, I'm going to share it. So um, I hope um, this isn't offensive to anybody. I know some things are a little too much to talk about probably on a YouTube channel, but um, I've just had some things happen to me that I need to um, get out. And sometimes talking to friends in the program or my sponsor um, or friends I was in treatment with um, doesn't always help because um, they want to give advice on what I should do or they have been dismissive of my feelings and that's frustrating. Or like tonight at my meeting, I was sharing and someone thought that I used because I was very hyperactive because whenever I talk about emotional things, I can never stop moving. I already have ADHD and um, I, um, it, it got bad. And he thought that I used, because I had put in my share that today was bad and I had wanted to use. So I don't know if he misheard me and heard that I did or was just assuming that I did. But it really pissed me off. Because on top of everything that's been going on with me this weekend, um, that was the last thing that I needed. Someone not believing me whenever I say I didn't use. So here we are. This is Sunday. Let me take it back to Friday night. Um, I've talked a little bit about working the fourth step. That's the step that I'm on right now in AA. And I um, have been fearful of it because I don't know what it's going to uncover. And I've been fearful of that. Well, I finally sat down and started working on it. And when it came to writing down the um, defects of character that were associated with each action associated with my anger and resentment towards this certain person, um, those were fine. I was like, yeah, no duh. That's, I feel like that with a lot of people. So I don't know why I thought that um, having the insight to who I am as far as it comes to addiction and my habits, was going to be a problem. What the problem is that um, reliving those occurrences and having to write down a bajillion answers about each... It's not a bajillion, but... Um, here, I'll get out the paperwork. Um, this is for one occurrence. You put the name, you put what happened, you put the character defects, and um, if there's any amends that needs to be made because of that occurrence, then you write that down. Then you go to the second sheet, and you fill out all this stuff. And one of them, um, oh, and one of the things, sorry, on this one, I forgot. Um, you have to check how this affects you. Um, and the options are self-esteem, security, ambitions, personal relations, sex relations, pride, shame, and fear. And then on this one, you have to answer where and how have I been selfish, self-centered, or self-seeking? Where and how have I been dishonest with this? Where and how have I been frightened? For what am I responsible to blame? For, I mean, for what am I to blame? I'm, I'm like, for what am I, why am, how am I responsible for any of it? Um, what decisions did I make based on self that later placed me in a position to be hurt? When in the past can I remember making this kind of decision? 
and what, where was I wrong and what was my part? And I only got two occurrences in with this person and I felt terrible. Um, it was like I was back in those moments and I was riddled with anxiety about continuing because I was afraid if I did, it was going to lead me down a dark road. And spoil alerts, um, well, no, I don't want to get ahead of myself. So I stopped and I contacted my sponsor. He's sick right now, so we couldn't talk very long. We just texted. Um, and I hate to say this, but talking to him didn't help uh, like it usually does. And it was just frustrating. I ended up talking to a friend of mine who had been, um, I had been in treatment with in Louisville, Kentucky, a place called Landmark Recovery. And um, she and I talked for about two hours. And I explained to her what I was feeling, and we talked about that for probably a good half hour, 45 minutes. But then the rest of it was just us shooting the shit, catching up. You know, we haven't really, we hadn't talked, or in, I mean, verbally since she left Landmark early December, and I got there late November. I wasn't there very long with her. Um, so it was awesome to have that kind of moment with somebody kind of like reconnecting. Um, but after I got off the phone with her, I made the mistake of getting on Facebook, and I happened to see this particular person online. And I knew, I, I mean... Can't say I did. Like, I knew what was going to happen if I started talking with this person. And I went ahead with it anyways. Um, his, um, I am not going to release names because I don't want him to see this and think I'm talking about him. It has nothing to do with him. Everything that happened between us was um, uh, consensual. It was... Um, agreed upon, nothing bad happened, and that I felt something bad happened to me because of him. He was a perfect gentleman. He was gracious to have me come over at two in the morning and do what I did. Um, but I went over to his house and we ended my year and two month long streak of um, living in the Sahara Desert uh, when it came to the area of the bedroom and going zons in there um, to not be too graphic. And I really hope that he doesn't watch this because I don't want to hurt his feelings. Um, but I feel absolutely nothing. Um... And it wasn't anything that he did. He was doing all the right things. He was hot as a mofo. He is one hot mofo. Um, and he was doing all the right stuff. But it nothing felt pleasurable about it. Not even whenever the fireworks happened. Um, which kind of... I've mentioned this in, in past videos that I've been having feelings and fears that I might be asexual. Um, I used to use sex as a conduit for things like attention and money and, um, you know, mostly attention. And especially attention from strong male presences who could fill the void that I have and have had in my life by having, to put it lightly, daddy issues. So, um, older men, men older than me. Um, I found myself not happy that I feel like that was confirmed in what happened between us. I, it just opened another can of worms for me. Um, if I am asexual, how would I ever date in the future? Um, I have no interest in dating, not right now, and I don't know if I ever will. But I 
just all this stuff came flooding to mind. Like, what does this mean now? Is this, is that what I truly experienced? I don't want to try it again because I felt gross. I felt so gross. We cuddled afterwards and that was wonderful. But during it, I felt... Can't, I, can't, I can't articulate it in a way that's going to probably be understood, but I just, I felt, bleh. you know, and it, like I said, it had nothing to do with him because he was hot. I was able to, quote unquote, um, rise to the occasion if you catch my drift, um, which hasn't happened in a long time. So I thought, hey, I'm healed. I was able to, you know, get the, <laughs> woo, um, and um, take that for what you want. If that goes over your head, I'm, I, um, and if you're still watching this far, then uh, you are really kind and gentle to hear me rant about um, my sex life and possible non-sex life now, but... It just, I thought it would be a relief. And um, it just added on that another layer of crap that someone is going to have to see on me, you know, um, or, or peel off me to see me. You know, um, I've always been viewed certain ways um, and generally, um, men are, have only been interested in me for one thing and, um, you know, I would think somebody was going to be my friends, wanting to be my friend, but then weeks into hanging out, they would either make a pass or express desires to have sex. I mean, like, when I say make a pass, I mean, like, make a physical pass. Um, or they would make their feelings known uh, that they either wanted to, um, you know, do the deed or, you know, be in a relationship. And here I was thinking I had a new friend. And it's turned out that when that happens and I say, um, I would like to just keep it friends. I have this and this and this going on. They don't take it lightly and I lose the friendship. Um, and during a time in my life where I had no friends, that was really hard to deal with. So um, this is giving me flashbacks that that might just be another thing that's going to deter someone from seeing me. They'll, they'll see whatever they see and then they'll hear, oh, but he doesn't like to have sex or he might not have sex a lot unless there's an emotional attachment and then they'll think, I don't want to deal with that. So that's been weighing on my brain. And then, um, I'm starting to develop crushes on people in the program. And you're not supposed to date. They, it's, it's just a general rule um, that you're not supposed to date or get into a relationship in your first year of sobriety. Of course, if you're already married or you know whatever they're not going to tell you oh divorce your spouse so you can get sober um then they just say relationships tend to make things harder for you in that you won't focus on recovery you're thinking of the wrong things um emotionally you're very stunted at the moment um and you're not going to make smart decisions if you are out dating around, you're going to be thinking with 
either the wrong head, if you're a male, or you're going to put yourself in situations where you're going to inevitably get hurt. Um, and it's, so it, the rule is not to punish you for being an addict. The rule is to help you get your first year of sobriety under your belt um, successfully so you can be a complete person so you can be there to be in a relationship with somebody whenever you're ready to. But, um, so I feel guilty about my crushes. I feel, um, I feel let down that, um, Friday night I used an unhealthy coping mechanism to deal with my feelings by going out and doing that. That used to be my go-to if I, besides drugs and alcohol, if I didn't like how I was feeling, I would call somebody up and, you know, um, so the fact that I couldn't drink and I couldn't use made me choose the next worst thing. And it just has really upset me. I feel like it made me walk backwards in my progression through the program. And I just can't get all of these bad feelings out of my head. And whenever I wanted to talk to my sponsor again yesterday about it, he was already asleep. Um, Cause I shared my first meeting yesterday. Bravo, yay. Um, not bravoing myself, but I chaired my first meeting and um, I was um, everyone told me I did a good job. So, um, and people liked my topic, although it was something that we never talk about. And so some people were like, F you, but this is a good subject. Um, and it was sex. Because that, you know, my the meeting I chaired was last night, and what what had happened was the night before. So, um, I thought it was pertinent since it was happening right now, and a lot of people had some really good insight, but not even that helped. So I wake up today, didn't get to talk to my sponsor. I sent him this text um, late in the night. It was like eleven or twelve thirty, twelve forty-five. It was just before the time change, um, and. Um, so before 1 a.m., I know for sure. Um, and it just laid everything out. And then whenever I woke up this morning, he hadn't responded. And it it made me feel let down. Because he's always been there with the answers whenever I have a conundrum. And I feel like this is a major one. I'm afraid to work step four, which I put in the text. I'm afraid to work step four because it's going to definitely, I'm sure, cause those feelings again. And I don't have drugs. I don't have alcohol. I don't have sex. Um, so what will I do next time? What if I decide to drink? What if I decide to use? And so I was just doing in this all day. And it got to where I was on the verge of tears. I thought, um, if this is so hard, why am I doing it? And the thoughts of wanting to use came into my brain. I didn't. I'm, let me precurse that. I didn't use. But um, I just, I prayed on it. Um, I tried to talk to people that, you know, but like I said, people have been full of advice. Nobody will just listen and say, wow, I'm sorry you're going through that. That must be difficult. Sometimes that's all I need to hear whenever I talk. Um, but friends who care about you try to be helpful and I can't blame them for wanting to. I'm not mad at any of my friends. So if anybody from from um, my home group see this or anybody from um, Landmark sees this, I'm not using names because, you know, anonymous. 
That's what the second A, and AA stands for, I know you all know that, so I'm just, anyways. Um, I, um, lost my train of thought. I was doing really good up to now, I felt. I'll have to watch this back and see if I'm all over the place, because apparently in my share I was all over the place, and my ADHD was out of control because I was talking about something emotionally charged. And it made this one guy think I had used. And so he went and got me some water and told me to stop drinking coffee and drink the water because it's better for me. And I was like, what the hell are you talking about? And um, it was just, he thought I used, even though I said I didn't use. Um, and that pissed me off because I'm like I one if I had used I wouldn't have gone to the meeting if I'm high I don't want to be in public I don't want anybody to see me high my parents have seen me high so many times that I you know around them I got to where it numbs me but I hate people seeing me high like the last thing I would want to do even if I had relapsed would be to go to a meeting high so people could see me like that. I don't think that they would judge me, but I would be so uncomfortable. And not because I had relapsed, but because I would be aware of myself and I would want to run away as fast as possible. Um, so I just was irritated and I, you know, I, my sponsor had suggested, I got a little ahead of myself there. My sponsor suggested going to the clubhouse and um, cleaning. And the thought of putting my keys in my car and going somewhere alone scared the bejesus out of me. I did not want to be driving and think, well, there's an ATM right there, and I know where both of my past dealers live. I have their, that not their house address, but the directions to their houses memorized. So, you know, that's just going to take time to forget how to get there. Um, but I just, I was afraid that if I went to my car, I didn't know where I was going to end up. My head's cut off. There we go. So I stayed in the house and isolated. Um, I tried to cuddle with my sponsee brother's dog, but I don't know if I've made her mad or if she's missing daddy and daddy. But um, basically the only time that she's happy to see me is whenever I come in the front door. Um, and then the rest of the time she has basically avoided me. If I walk into the same room as her, she immediately leaves. Um, I tried to cuddle with her and she left. She was sitting on the couch and I sat down next to her and she left. Um, so I don't think I did anything to piss her off. She's gotten everything. Um, but I think maybe she just misses her dad's and, um, um, my sponsor brother even said, um, this is a, one of the longest times they've been away for a long time. So I think she's just having separation anxiety and is taking it out on me. Um, but I really wanted my dog so I could cuddle. Um, and I couldn't cuddle with the small dogs cause they have velociraptor claws and I, I think I'd end up with more cuts and scrapes um, than, than I would want. Um, and they don't really lay down. Whenever they're out of their cages, they are moving nonstop. And uh, Peanut tries to um, make out with me every chance that she gets. So um, I don't know if you remember that live that I did, but that's, that's why, that was Peanut, the white one. Um, love her to death. I love all three of them to death. They've been wonderful. But 
Um, I could have really used my Luna. Because they have a Luna. I have a Luna. I could have used my Luna today. Because... You know... Surrogate dogs don't always... Aren't always in tune to their... Into the people that are just staying with them. They're in tune with their owners. And Luna lets me cuddle with her as long as I want. Especially now in her old age. When she was younger, sometimes cuddling was on her terms. But she would cuddle for a long time as long as she got to cuddle with you in the way that she wanted. Um, and then you had to give her head scratches too. You, know, you have to give at least five to ten minutes of head scratches... And then she would lay with you for two, three hours as long as you didn't move. And back when she was younger, whenever I was having major depressive episodes and they were untreated because I didn't know that I had bipolar 2, type 2, um, it, that would be pretty often. And she would come up, I would lay on my side with my knees bent, and she would lay uh, in the triangle that my legs made. And she'd rest her head on my butt. I have... A bajillion and a half pictures of her looking so cute with her head laying on my butt. Um, and I really miss that. Um, but I didn't want to see anybody today. I was afraid to drive anywhere. Like I said, I couldn't just drive home and see my dog. Because I would definitely be driving right past one of my dealers on the way home. Because um, he lives... four exits away from my exit off um, I-35 in Oklahoma City. Well, I live in Norman. Um, he lives in the town called Moore, which is just north of us. Um, and it's four, um, four overpasses. Um, it's, it's still a considerable distance. It's, it's about a 20-minute drive um, to, to get to his house from my house. But still, every time I drive past his exit, I don't have a feeling like I want to use. But I get this tinge inside of me that just makes me cringe. Like, what if I had gotten off? What if I hadn't gone to rehab and this was me coming home and I had scored some stuff? Um, I just... Keep on beating myself up. So the fact that I didn't use, I feel like is a major win. But that person, assuming that I had used, even though I said I didn't, and I shared twice because we had multiple, we had, uh, we had a lot of time left over at the end because there were only a few of us there. Um, but I shared again and I was like, I was just plain and simple because he used his share to direct at me even though he didn't never said my name but what things that he was saying corresponded to my share so um and he kind of nodded at me a couple of times when he was saying stuff so i feel like it was very obvious that he was referring to things that i had said or whatever um and this was all i think this was after he got the water yeah his share was after he got the water he got the water at the break in the middle when we do, when we pass the basket and do the chips. So I just was really, I felt like not using was a win. And then I get there and that happened. And it was like, okay, so I didn't use, but apparently because of my ADHD and my emotional distress and um, so whenever I share, it's just like my videos here. I'm all over the place. Like I'll be like the topic is like tonight's topic was prayer. And my only mention of prayer was saying that I prayed a few times today and it didn't help. Mainly I was talking about my problem and saying how much I wish I could get some um Find a, not a solution or absolution or um, an answer. Um, 
but just I wanted the bad feelings to go away. And that's why I would always use in the past, especially the last year and a half to two years. Um, I don't have the best relationship with my parents and it's no secret. Um, we're working on fixing that by having me move out of the house because it's just gotten to the breaking point where um, we're going to end up resenting on both sides for the rest of our lives if it doesn't happen. So um, we are working on that. But um, I um, lost my train of thought. Damn ADHD. Maybe I shouldn't play with that. Um, lost my uh, parents, bad relationship with my parents. Um, London Fog! Um, sorry, I hadn't done one in the video yet, so that was for you, Noni May. Noni May Crochet. She's the best surrogate mother I could ever ask for and want. Um, well, let me look up her actual... Well, no, you guys all know her because you fo you're following me because you follow her. Um, but she has been amazing in helping me get subscribers uh, to my channel. But I just, I'm going to, I you know what, I'm not going to talk about my parents. I'm not going to talk about anything else. It's been 31 minutes and 39 seconds. And I feel like all I've accomplished is telling you the crap without even trying to discuss what I want to do about it. Um... Which is what I should do because that will help me. But I feel like I could go on for another half hour. And um, I know I have friends who think 30 minutes, 30 minute videos would be better for my channel. I know there are people who will sit and watch an entire three hour live. Um, so I feel like I don't want to just share my shit and expect... Sympathy. Um, about the crushes, I am going to let the people know that I have the crushes on. Because most of it, it's, it stemmed from having admiration for them. I, you know, I like them. They're good people. They, um are doing well. They, you know, what for whatever reason, for each person, I admire them. And I think my stupid brain that's been single for over 10 years um, is trying to trick me into thinking that that admiration is a feeling from a place of Affection other than brotherly love. Um, and it's hard to differentiate, especially by person in person, why I'm feeling that way with that person or not. Um, or what, you know, whatever. So I think. I'm just going to suck it up and tell the people, hey, this is going on with me and I wanted to let you know um, I have admiration for you and what you do. And um, I don't ever want you to think that things that I do or say are... Anything other but for friendship. Or something along those lines. Because that's true. Almost none of them... There's, I mean, there's maybe one that I could actually see myself dating. Um, and... I... I don't know what to do about it. I feel like letting it out and so it's not in my head would be healthier than stewing on it, which is what I do with a lot of the things that make me feel bad. That's why I went ahead and made this 
video, even though it's not my usual happy self, who is doing crazy stuff, like sliding down an ice mountain on his ass. Um, you know, I'm being very TMI for things that I shouldn't be sharing, but it's taking the power away from those feelings. I actually am feeling better. Um, I think... I don't know what to do about the crushes. I don't know if letting people know that, hey, um, I'm feeling this way. I don't know if it's a love crush or an admiration crush, but I just thought you should know. So if you're weary of it or whatever, keep your distance or um, I'll keep it at bay. I'll keep things professional, whatever. I would rather people be aware so I don't get put in a position to get hurt. Should I get it? Should it? grow um and i don't want people to judge me for that because i feel like the more i hold on to things the bigger they feel and i feel like a harmless crush or feeling of whatever because you admire them or have gratitude for the impact that they have on your life or whatever it is. Um, I feel like they have a right to know so they can act accordingly and do things that they that I would hope would, would be to not cause you to have feel or not make feelings come on both sides, you know, or say flirty things or, um, you know, whatever. Um, but I just feel like that needs to be addressed so I can get it out of my head because there's one particular person that I need to discuss it with and I do not want to. Um, and it's highly problematic. Um, but I can always put it in my step work and share it with my sponsor and get his advice um, on what I should do. But more than likely, he won't tell me anything that I don't already know or haven't said in this video, like not being in a relationship. Um, you know, just admire the person. Um, and don't let feelings come in the way because you don't need to label what you're feeling for somebody because you like being around them. Um, that's one thing I've been told a lot lately is to stop trying to label things. And I know that's probably what he'll say. And I don't... Um, oh, my mom just texted. Um, I don't... I don't want to appear weak-minded suddenly. I've been really steadfast and ready to go and rearing for the program and everything. And I'm still psyched on being sober and clean and being in AA. But it's just everything that happened this weekend and um, not really getting a lot of chances to talk with people who un understood and were not dismissive while they were trying to be supportive. And, you know, um, I know that it was all coming from a good place, but it, a lot of it felt very dismissive. And no offense to anybody who is watching who has given me advice. If you are, I'm not upset. 
Um, I know I've spoken to a couple of you specifically. I'm not upset at anybody. Nobody did anything to hurt my feelings. I know everything was coming from a place of love. But, um, like I said, sometimes you just need to say your piece in here. I'm sorry that you're going through that. That sucks. So, that's what makes me concerned of sharing about the crushes to people. I'm afraid it's going to make things worse. And I'm already feeling in a bad place. And so, I just, I hate things eating at me. And since Friday night, at approximately 2.33 a.m., Friday night, yeah. Um, it's just, I feel like I've been having something to eat at me. And like I said, it wasn't any one thing. It's been everything that's happened, but not necessarily all at the same time. If I was talking to somebody, it was all at the same time. But if I was sitting in my thoughts, it could have been one of any of the, of the things going on in my brain right now. And there's others that I am not sharing and I do not feel comfortable sharing on YouTube um, because I know my family um, watch. I know I have um, people from the program who watch um, and there are just things that I need to figure out how to work out on my own um, without getting hurt or potentially making things worse for me emotionally. Um, so I'm just, there's been all kinds of things going in and out of my head. And the only thing I could think of was to make this video. Like, you know, you might be feeling like you're two steps out the door to your car to go get some meth, but how about you make a video and talk about it? where there won't be any interruptions of someone giving you advice, where no one, you can't see anybody, anybody's faces while you're talking and read that they have whatever emotion on their face. Some of it has been concern, which was understandable, but some of it has just been... Very nonchalant. Like. Like they didn't think it was that big of a deal. Or that I. You know like I was making a mountain out of a molehill. Or you know that I'm. That I'm. Not all these things that I thought I was. But that's like I said that's not. That wasn't the answer I was looking for. Um, but everybody was very helpful. And I'm steadfast now in my recovery. I'm not going to use. I feel a lot better now, especially after sharing in this video. Um, it's comforting that... I can talk about whatever and people will keep watch, watching. I've cussed. I've talked about um, sexual activities that are part of the BDSM community. Um, I've... Oh, what have I... I've done lots of, of things that should turn people away from me, but people keep coming to my channel, keep subscribing, keep liking my videos and commenting, and I love that. Um, there's not many places where you can be yourself and be liked for it. Um... I was almost going to say adored, but that's going a little step too far. I don't think anybody adores me. Like, oh my god, I adore you! 
You're just so, so much, and I love it. Um, oh, there's the silly out. See, all I needed to do was get out my shit. But every time I would go to make a video, I would just go to the dark place. And I was like, nobody wants to hear this. Nobody wants to hear how bad I'm feeling. But people like me for being real. So this is me being real. And toots. Um, what was I going to say? I just wanted to say toots, really. But I was, I was going to say something after it. But I was like, whatever I'm about to say, I'm going to say toots. And then like the rest of it just went like, woo! Um, ADHD! Ha ha! It's your brain going, you were going to say that, but wait, look! And look over there! And Remember that one time that you got in that fight in the second grade with your neighbor? And... Oh, your friend Alex moved away in the second grade. And then um, I had a boyfriend named Alex. And then I think about the trip that I went on with Alex. And then while we were on the trip, I saw seals. And then I think about seals. And then I think about something I saw on TV about seals. That's what goes on in my brain all day long. That's what it's like having ADHD. You think about something, something related pops up. And then that takes over. Then it just, it's, it's a vicious cycle. It's just like this. And that's why sometimes telling my stories, I definitely know I've got enough subject really bad in the past. I feel like so far on this video, I've done a decent job at not getting ahead of myself, not going too far off subject. I, I spilled the tea. Which, for those of you who are not familiar with that phrase, spilling the tea means letting the truth be known. So, you guys can come spill tea with me anytime. Um, so, it's just letting, letting it out. So, you ready for me to spill this piping hot tea all over your freaking face? That's something from my one of my favorite drag queens, except for she says the full F word. And um, it's funny. Um, I am not saying anything else that's going to make me look bad. <laughs> um... I just appreciate you all for watching. Um, I appreciate every single one of you for subscribing, for coming back, for um, sharing my videos and getting me other subscribers. I um, love all the comments always. I know sometimes I don't respond to them in the, in the fastest manner, um, but I, um, it's, no, I won't even get into that because that's just making excuses. I will try to be better about it. Um, but um, it's not always easy to, to do it whenever I'm not in front of my computer because um, of the way the, the comments show up on the app on my phone for the analytics. So um, I missed, so I, I, I went through and I noticed I had missed like five or six because they never popped up on my phone. So it's, if I do it at my computer, I can comment on everybody. But um the only time I'm in front of my computer is when I'm making a video and then I go to upload it and I don't do anything else. I walk off and do something else because the video is going to take an hour to upload. And this is going to take a really long time because I, I have a feeling it's at 48 minutes right now. Uh, well, 49 minutes. Um, and it's not... Um... Once again, lost my train of thought. It's not something, but, you know, whatever it's not, it's definitely not. You know, you know what I'm talking about, right? Because it's not. It's definitely not. Whatever I was talking about, it's not. Um, that's the joys of having mental illness. Um, you, especially having bipolar with ADHD, because bipolar makes your mind race. Um, and you get emotional. When I get emotional, my mind races even more. So uh, ADHD, my hyperactivity gets worse. So if I share something in a meeting 
I'm doing like this, playing with my legs, pull my feet up on my leg like this, and I'm playing with my shoes. I'm like all over the place. And um, I assume that's why he thought I used tonight because I was very much like that because I was sharing things that were making me emotionally high strung. Um, so to those who follow me, who also suffer from mental illnesses, whatever they may be, um, it, I, I'm no, no judgments on any kinds. I don't think any one is worse than the other. We have our own paths to walk and our own burdens to overcome. And, um, you know, someone with schizophrenia can be completely fine as long as they take their medication. You know, um, that's a bad example because I know there's a lot of people who have schizophrenia who are not great. And that's an unfair example. So, that's, um, but like with every mental illness, you have to take your medications. You have to see your doctor regularly. You have to do wellness checks with yourself and say, what am I feeling? Is this a natural feeling? Do I feel balanced? Do I feel too emotional? Do I feel too numb? And then you and your doctor can balance out your medications if anything is feeling off. And, um... I definitely know my being back on a stimulant for ADHD, the one I'm on, is not working. Before I went off them, I was on a different one, and I was taking a double dose of the highest dose of um, Adderall XR. And that was working wonderfully, except it would put me into more manic episodes. And I wasn't on a high enough dose of... Um, a mood stabilizer then. I'm getting way off subject here. I know I was talking about what happened this weekend, but mental illness has come into it now, so I'm just sharing. Um, but I... Um, shit, lost my train of thought again. I need to stop interrupting myself. Um, oh, the um, I was not on the mood stabilizer that I'm on now. And it's a good mood stabilizer. And it's really helped me a lot feel more balanced. And I can always go up on a higher dose if going on a double dose of a stimulant makes me have more manic episodes. Because I tend to want to use when I'm manic or if I'm super upset. Which, I mean, those can both happen in the same thing. I'm emotional, high-strung, and manic, and I'm like, I want to use. Or it could be that I'm feeling good, and I'm manic, and I want to feel better. Um, so, having a mental illness, or mental illnesses, is a burden all on its own. But me mixing it in with being an addict has made it so much harder. And, um, I get a lot of comments at meetings about my hyperactivity. And I'm sure there's people who assume that I'm still using because of it. Um, but I just, I can't let other people's actions or opinions bother me. But it's so hard to do that. When I'm the kind of person who I who wants to be universally not hated, um, aka liked by everybody, um, I just say universally not hated because um, wanting to be liked by everybody sounds extremely childish and naive, and so I'm just putting, you know frosting on it and sprinkles and like all the decorative stuff on top of my one of my character defects and dressing it up as something else so you go look at it and you go oh yeah you just don't want to be hated no i i really want uh, people to like me 
I've always sought acceptance from everybody. If somebody doesn't accept me, I get bummed. I get really bummed. And the last thing I need is to have people not accept my truth at my meetings. So, uh, all right, it's been almost an hour now. I'm going to stop. I'm starting to get all over the place because I didn't plan to talk about mental illness and how it relates to my addiction. Um, addictions. Um, so I will um, end the video here. I just want to thank everybody. Oh, Ooh, it's my sponsor. Hey, uh, what's up? Okay, give me just one second. Um, I'm going to end my video here. All right. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. And um, I will see you in the next video. And be sure to tune in to my new channel. It's um, with me and Derek the Nitwit Strong. We are doing um, a combined live um, stream every Saturday at 6 p.m. Central Time. And I uh, hope to see you. I will put a link um, to, the, to our new channel in the description of this video. And as I said, please like, share, and subscribe. Have a great day, everybody. Love yourselves and love somebody else.